Joining you now is Bonson Group founder, David Bonson. Good to see you, David. Good to be here. So what takes us into, into the second half of the year? Do stocks keep floating higher? You don't want to bet against them because there is still some built up potential, primarily around fiscal stimulus, mm -hmm. the tax reform. We don't know how much of that's already priced in. But I still think the smarter play risk reward is to be selective. Mm -hmm. Take some of the areas that underperformed in the first half of the year. It's definitely a time to lighten up on FANG and some of these other high multiple growthy tech stocks. And we think financials and energy are the place to be in the second half of the And year. financials and energy have done extraordinarily well this week. They sure have. So we're seeing somewhat of a reversal. How do you feel about tech? Tech strong, what, we had seven months of gains in a row. Not so much for this month number eight. Tech is going to be weak in the second half? Well, we kind of divide tech into two sectors. We look at old tech versus new tech. Okay. Good, high-quality, free cash flow tech your Cisco's and Intel's and these kind of names mm -hmm. versus the new tech. And we think there's great growth out of your Facebooks and Amazons and so forth, right. but it's so priced in. And just on a risk reward basis, it looks unattractive. Like you said, it's had an incredible run. So if we're going to be in technology, we want the right. stuff that makes it all run. And broad picture, we got a report on consumer spending today. Mm -hmm. Look, there, inflation, where is it? Prices are cheaper at the store, no matter what store you go to. Yet we're not opening our wallets wider. And I bring this in because as we talk about overall growth, GDP, 1.4%, it seems that we're stalled. And consumers aren't contributing. How do we get to 3%? The, well, the GDP growth at 3% is not going to largely be consumer-driven. It's going to be business investment-driven. And I think that deregulation in the government sector will help alleviate some of the crowding out that's taken place. It's frankly taken place since the beginning of the Obama administration. Right now, we have an opportunity for the private sector to make up that gap, have less of an interference from government, and see more robust pro-growth around tax reform, deregulation, things of that nature. Now, we all know politically things seem stalled. There's still a lot of volatility that will come around that. But that's the, that's the path to 3% plus real GDP growth. And the consumer, everyone loves to talk about it, but it really hasn't been the needle mover since the financial crisis. The consumer's smarter than they were. We don't want the consumer spending recklessly. Uh, well, reckless. Oh, yeah, but you want the consumer spending. I, we, we talk about the death of the shopping mall all the time and the retail stocks under pressure trying to change themselves, facing the Amazon.com. You yeah, know, the death of the shopping mall story is not about the death of consumer. It's about okay. the consumer changing, changing their habits. And so to me, that's a really different story. Ultimately, I think the consumer is shopping, but they're not kicking up GDP numbers. Mm -hmm. It's sort of flatlining. You mentioned energy being strong in the second half of the year. Yeah. Just last week, we saw oil prices go into bear market territory, right? Mm -hmm. This decline of 20%, and they have come up this week. But we're trading $44, $45 a barrel. You know, drillers can't profit at oil prices much lower than that, can Not I? much lower, but they can at 45, and this is the whole story. The U.S. shale industry has become the marginal producer. It's an incredible paradigm shift in the global energy story. I think that they can make money at 38 to 42, but not a lot. Okay. They used to be able to, they used to not be able to make money below 60. So they've, innovation technology has, has increased the profitability spectrum that much. I still believe 50-ish is a better number for the oil complex than 45. But ultimately, what we know is the shale producers are kind of calling the shots. Mm -hmm. Remember, Saudi Arabia is getting ready for the largest IPO in history. Yeah. They have all the motivation out of OPEC in the world to see their supply get under control, production get under control, and then see prices move into the 50s. Right. I want to bring in Nicole Petalides now. Uh, she's down on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange as she is watching the markets every single day, talking to the traders. Uh, what's the sentiment down there today, Nicole? Because, you know, we've got a holiday weekend upon us. The market's closed on the 4th. How is volume? What's the sentiment? Well, what's interesting now is, look, we're coming back. We're going closer to our session highs. Don't forget, it's end of the quarter. Anybody who had cash on the sidelines, these portfolio managers, they want to position and really show that they have owned some of the great, great stocks of the year 2017 and the, and the latest quarter. For today, the action right now, the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 100 points. And you can see all up arrows across the board. We're seeing some of the industrials and cyclicals doing well, names uh, this year that have done so well, Boeing, McDonald's, and Apple. So overall here, there really is some back and forth action. I know it's been somewhat of a seesaw market, 
but the optimism is still there for the long term and still thinking that we heard from Steve Mnuchin yesterday uh, the idea that the tax plan will happen and so everybody's still holding on here for the long term. All, All right. right. Nicole, thank you. David, thank you. Good to see both of you. Thank you.